Some of you learn how to code for fun as a hobby and that's totally cool, but a lot of us learn how to code so we could get jobs as programmers and start making money and there's nothing wrong with that. So it's important to understand how that works, not only because, well, you should know how you're getting paid, but also for potentially negotiating your total compensation. Since we're talking about money, I do think we need a different lighting for this video, so. By the way, this is how things work in the United States. I can't really speak for other countries. So the most common form of compensation is gonna be your base salary. This is the total amount that you're guaranteed for a year and where certain things such as stocks or bonuses can fluctuate, your base salary is gonna be pretty static unless of course you receive a raise. Some companies only offer salary and we'll talk about why a little later, but it's mostly so an employee won't just wait until they get their bonus and then quit the next day. So yeah, the most common thing everyone gets is the base salary. As I mentioned, you can also receive a bonus. This is usually paid out annually or semi-annually. This can also be a cash bonus or sometimes companies offer a stock bonus. We're gonna talk about stocks next, so let's focus on the cash. Generally, it's around 10% of your salary, but it can vastly differ based on your company, your performance, and how well the company is doing. When I was at Western Digital, we had a 10% target, and 5% of it was based on how the company did. And everyone got paid the same amount based on that, and then the other 5% was based on your performance. So if the company did well and you did well, you get the 10%. Otherwise, you could get anything from below 10% all the way down to zero, which was not uncommon. All right, let's talk about stocks. I had to get comfortable on the couch here because this might get a little complicated, but it's actually not that bad. So this mainly differs between public and private companies. Private companies generally have less cash on hand, so they offer a lower salary, but they will offer more stocks. The caveat here is that these stocks aren't worth anything, at least not yet. If the company ends up going public, then you get all your shares and you can cash out. But if the company goes under, your shares are worthless. And by shares and stocks, I'm using these interchangeably. So you're banking on the belief that the company succeeds and the founders decide to go public. That's why for me personally, I probably would never work at a late stage startup unless I was maybe just starting out and I'm desperate for experience. You're gonna have to go through that grind of working like 50 to 60 hours a week. It's very stressful and if the founders do eventually decide to take the company public, the founders are the ones that are gonna be millionaires overnight, whereas the people that got in late will end up with like 50K. All right, let's talk about public companies. These are gonna be your Googles, your Ubers, and quite honestly, a lot of companies that are, are public that I've never heard of. Public companies give you what are called restricted stock units or RSUs. Basically, you get a set amount of stocks when you're hired, but you can't cash out quite yet. This is so you don't get your stocks and then on the first day you cash out and quit. With restricted stock units, you have to wait a certain amount of time. After that time passes, your stocks are what are called vested. And then at that point you can cash out. You don't have to cash out, you can keep the stocks if you think you're gonna go up, but I think most people do cash out. Generally, you're gonna get a 5, 15, 40, 40 split over the first four years. So for example, say you get 100 shares of a stock, after the first year you can cash out a five, after the second year, 15 stocks, and then the third and fourth year, you can get you can cash out of 40 stocks. Now this is back-end heavy. As you notice, 80% of it are in the last two years. And this is generally to give employees more incentive to stay. Because after two years, you're only getting 20% of your stocks. It's really not that much. And companies offer stocks because it generally gets employees to work harder. Because if I put in good work and the company succeeds, it eventually means more money in my pocket. But there is also the risk that a stock could go down. So there's that. But like I mentioned, not all companies do this. I know Netflix just does a pure cash salary. So no stocks or bonuses, but the base salary is gonna be higher. And they do this so people don't just wait around for their stocks to vest and then cash out and then leave. Like if I know I'm gonna cash out on 50,000 in stocks in three months, I'm just gonna stay for those three months, but I'm not really gonna care about that job. I'm just staying so I can get that extra payday. And this is a situation that some companies just wanna avoid altogether. The next most common thing is a sign-on cash bonus. This is money that's instantly deposited to you as soon as you sign your bonus. It is generally split over two years with the second year being higher. For example, if I get hired with a $25,000 bonus, I would get $10,000 as soon as I start. And then as soon as my second year starts, I would get the additional 15,000. The catch is that you have to stay for that whole year. Otherwise, they're gonna make you give that money right back. Again, they're incentivizing you to one, sign the offer because you get a lump sum immediately deposited. And they want you to stay because 
companies don't want turnover because it causes instability and it costs a lot of money to hire and train people. Next thing you can get is a relocation bonus. If you have to move for your job, which isn't as common now with all the remote work opportunities, but it's either if you live more than 50 or 100 miles away, they give you a stipend to help with your move. Again, when I was at Western Digital, they gave me $3,000 for my move, and they also gave me a free month of housing uh, while I look for something more permanent. Speaking of housing, this may be part of the offer. This is generally more common for interns, just because usually when you move somewhere, you have to sign a year lease. When I had my internship at Amazon, they hooked it up with a very nice one bedroom apartment that I only had to pay $500 a month for, which sounds really nice right now. I think I pay like, five times that now. So yeah, those are the main things that get included in an offer, at least the main ones that you negotiate for. There's gonna be your salary, your stocks, and your sign-on bonus. I notice a lot of people focus mostly on or just try to negotiate their base salary, but I found that companies are actually more willing to give you a stock bonus or a sign-on bonus because higher salary is something that they're gonna have to pay you forever or as long as you work there. But stocks and sign-on bonus, that's just like a one-time thing they can give you to incentivize you to come work for them. So if they say no to asking for more base salary, try those other things. Worst thing they'll say is no. A few other things that I can mention that aren't really part of the offer, but are benefits, and these can be really for any job, are gonna be, so you get the usual health, dental, and vision benefits. Those are pretty much a must have. Commuter benefits, like free transportation on buses and trains when you're going to and from work. Free gym memberships, free food. This can vary from a free Friday lunch all the way to a fully stocked kitchen with chefs. 401k matching, where if you put a certain percentage of of your salary into your 401k, the company will match a percentage of that. I think Google does like a 50% match. So if I put 20,000 a year into my 401k, they put in 10,000, which is, I mean, it's like free money, but you can't touch your 401k until you're almost 60, but still. So going back to salary versus other benefits, this website here, levels.fyi, shows the salary of different level of engineer and seniority at the big tech companies. So if we go to Google, a software engineer two, as we see here, the base salary is around 135,000, which I'm not sure exactly how this information is gathered. I do know the creator of this site watches my channel. So if you're watching this video, I'd love to know how this data is accumulated. As you can see, it can take a solid salary of 135,000, but with stocks and bonuses, you can get an insane amount of extra cash, 193,000. Now we're talking about some serious money. Matter of fact, if this is true, I need to stop making YouTube videos and start studying and applying for jobs. So let me know, is there something I missed? Any thoughts you have? Is there something I should share in a future video? Let me know down in the comments. And yes, I do read comments sometimes, believe it or not. Or if you don't have anything, just put an emoji because engagement helps. And while you're down there, like the video because I know if you're still watching, you probably like the video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.